What is up guys? Welcome to our third and final battle of the NPL Miners tryout tournament. Today we are up against Jar, our good friend Jar Boss, Jar08, whatever you want to call him, Jarrett. Uh, and he's got a mighty strong team. Uh, he was one of the teams that I was scared to face off when I saw that we were in a division together. Uh, and what, what, what our pools were. Uh, and yeah, he was—he definitely had one of the scariest teams going into this uh, this tournament in our, in our division and all of Division B. He's a very strong team, as you can see. He has Gudra, Volcanion, Florges, Skarmory, Gothitelle, and Zoroark. He left behind a Megalopony and a Hippowdon. So his offensive core is really strong. His defensive core is really strong. He has pretty much everything that he needs. Uh, he's got gimmicky stuff like Gothitelle, which is Shadow Tag, uh, Zoroark, which is of course Illusion. Uh, he's caught both of his opponents off guard with uh, Zoroark up until now, so we're not trying to have that happen in this game. And uh, I'm not having a team builder for this battle, guys, just because uh, you, I'm going to be explaining the sets as I go along. Uh, you guys will see what each and every one is. So let's get right into this. Uh, this is on normal. Yes, it is. Beautiful. So he's going to lead out with Gudra. I'm going to lead out with Clefable. Now, this isn't a bad matchup for me, uh, except for the fact that he could have Sludge Wave, which I'm very much expecting him to have. Uh, but I know that it's not going to do too much to Clefable, so uh, I'm going to stay in here. I'm going to pri prioritize getting up rocks. We are Stealth Rocks, Thunder Wave, uh, Moon Blast, and a Soft Boiled. Pretty standard Clefable set outside of Calm Mind. Uh, we have Stealth Rocks instead, uh, and we are a slightly physically defensive variant, I believe. Uh, and he's going to go for Sludge Wave, as you can see. That's not a 2 hit KO on me. Uh, he doesn't get the poison, not that it matters. Uh, because we are a magic guard, but I am going to switch out here into my Jirachi. He predicts that very nicely and goes for a flamethrower and catches my Jirachi off guard. Now, this thing was only here for his Lopany. Uh, I have Rocky Helmet, uh, max defensive. Uh, so, yeah, Rocky Helmet, max defensive, was able to take two adamant high jump kicks from Lopany, uh, deal some Rocky Helmet damage, and wish protect off the damage. So, that was the idea with bringing this set, was to handle his Lopany somewhat. Uh, and I have Heart Stamp on here as well, coupled with the fact that I have some priority of Scarfer as well, as you guys will see. But he, like I said, he predicts that very nicely, goes for a Flamethrower. I'm going to U-turn out, and I'm just going to go out into my Keldeo at this point, because I want to test to see if he has Thunderbolt. Uh, and he goes for Dragon Pulse, which doesn't do too much. And this Keldeo is Leftovers. This should have signaled to him that I was more, more than likely Calm Mind, and I think it did if you go and watch his side of the battle. By the way, his link will be in the description down below, so please go check him out. He's a great guy. Uh, and so... I'm thinking at this point he probably doesn't have T-Bolt, but I still want to test it out. So I'm actually going to switch out here uh, back in my Jirachi just to test the waters as he's actually actually going to go out into his Florges. Uh, now he thought this was a prediction um, of me predicting his Florges to come in, when in fact it was just me actually uh, testing the waters to see if he had T-Bolt. So I'm going to go for Protect right here as he actually also goes for Protect. It's going to fail. He wanted to see if I was Scarfed or not because he didn't see an item yet. And uh, he's now going to switch out into his Volcanion as I get up a wish, and I'm going to switch out into my Keldeo to get back all my health as he goes for a Steam Eruption, he's playing it safe. Now, Volcanion is one of his Z-Mons, guys, and I'm Calm Mind, and I'm EV to a certain way to be able to take hits from Megalopony and be able to knock it out at plus one with Secret Sword, but I'm afraid of this Volcanion having Bloom Doom, and when I was prepping, I knew he would either bring Bloom Doom or All Out Pummeling with Super Power for Snorlax. Uh, but Snorlax wasn't a huge threat to his team, so I was really, really expecting him to have Bloom Doom right here. So what I'm actually going to do is pull out a switch into my Thunderous. This was not a an offensive switch. This is a Scarf Thunderous, by the way. This was not an offensive switch uh, to catch something off guard like a Skarmory or a Florges. It was just pu me purely scouting if he had Bloom Doom. In retrospect, this probably wasn't a good idea. My Rachi was probably useless at this point, looking at his team. So... I switch my Thunderous in and it takes a huge Steam Eruption and ends up getting burned. And this is going to matter later in the game as you guys will see. Uh, he's going to switch out his Volcano and make a safe switch out into his Gudra. I'm going to go for the T-Bolt. Uh, not playing any games, I need that, that Volcano on gone. And now I'm going to uh, actually pull a switch back out into my Keldeo, knowing that this thing probably doesn't have T-Bolt. He's going to go for Flamethrower, expecting my Jirachi again. And now I'm going to... Uh, go for the double out again into Clefable this time as he switches out into his Florges. Now, I wanted to be able to Thunder Wave this thing, uh, so he's going to go for a Wish. I'm going to go for a Thunder Wave. I don't know yet if he has Aromatherapy or not, so getting this thing Thunder Wave is actually pretty important to me. Uh, but he does reveal the Aromatherapy, so Thunder Waving this thing is completely useless at this point. Uh, it might make a difference later in the game, but we'll see. He's going to go for another Wish. I'm going to go for another T-Wave. 
and he's going to uh, intelligently wish, wish pass into one of his biggest threats uh, once again, which is his Volcanion and heal it up all the way. As I go out into my Jirachi, now I know that he's probably not going to click um, a grass move right here, but I'm just going to go for the Protect to see what he goes for. In case he's choiced, I'm also catching him on the Steam Eruption. And now I can switch back into my Keldeo. Luckily, once again, he does not get a burn on this Steam Eruption. Uh, it's only going to do 25% because we do resist that. And uh, I'm going to go for a Calm Mind here. And the screen is going to light up, guys. And I got very scared because I know that Bloom Doom can still kill me from here. But, as you'll see, he goes for All Out Pummeling. Now, I saw that he can kill me. He just wasted his most powerful move against me. Uh, Steam Eruption is doing nothing, Flamethrower is doing nothing, and he does not have a grass move. My instinct here should have been to click Scald. 100% of the time, it should have been to click Scald uh, to catch his Gothitelle, because when I was in prep, I really wanted to bring a Shed Shell on Keldeo. My initial thought when I first saw uh, Jarseem and I first saw that we were up against each other, I uh, was getting ready to go out, and I was like, Okay, I'm going to bring a Calm Mind Keldeo with a lot of Fizz Def for his Lopany, and I'm going to run Shed Shell so that I can switch out into my Absol on a Trick or a Psy Shock and Pursuit Trap it. And I ultimately decided to end up running Leftovers because I ran some Calcs on his Florges, and his Florges could two-hit KO me. Uh, if we were up against each other, we were both at 100%. If I go for Calm Mind, if I don't have leftovers, he can still two-hit KO me through Calm Mind. Like, the first one does 60, the second one does 40. And these are, like, mid-rolls. And that's not something I wanted to risk. I wanted to make sure I had as much health as possible. But because I'm not running Shed Shell, Jar's gonna make an offensive switch out into his Gothitelle, as he knows I cannot click a water move, but I should have. I go for Secret Sword, it does a lot, and you guys will see, he's gonna go for Psy Shock. It does very little to me. Now, if he would've switched in on a Scald, he would have been 2 at KO'd right here, because it does 46%, and I got a burn. Uh, and 46 plus 46 is 90... Uh, is it 90? Uh, yeah, it's 92. So his Gothitelle would have gone down to 2 Scalds, and then he would have been in a pretty bad position, because I can heal up on a lot of his team. He would have had to go out into Zoroark and reveal what it was. But here I'm going to execute the plan, pursue trap his Gothitelle, make sure it does it can't come in anymore. Uh, he has Death Fodder now, and he's going to go out into his Volcanion, and right here, guys... I prepped for this thing, I ran a calc with Thunderbolt with my investment, and it does to a standard Volcanion set with no bulk, um, 67 to, uh, I, th I think it was like 62 to 77. So the roll was in his favor. But for some reason, I saw that he had all out pummeling, and I saw that it probably wasn't special, that it wasn't coming off of Focus Blast because it would have done a lot more. I didn't run the calc. But I figured that it was super power for Snorlax. So I had this odd feeling that he was a negative spadef nature. So I'm going to click Thunderbolt anyway. And his Volcanion is going to drop to this Thunderbolt. So that was perfect. Huge threat gone. This is a big part of the game right here. Because with that thing gone, my team just pivots around endlessly around his stuff. And I'm fine. He's going to go out into Florges. And he's actually going to pull a double into his Skarmory. Skarmory takes 12% from rocks. But this isn't Skarmory, it is Zoroark. Spoilers, um, <laughs> I'm about to die right here. Jirachi's gonna go down. Uh, I end up going for a Wish as he goes for a knockoff. He's gonna knock off my Rocky Helmet that I had for Lopany. He's gonna take a little bit of damage from that and Life Orb. And now I'm gonna bring in my Clefable. And I expect him to have a Poison move, but he actually just goes for knockoff again. So this tells me that he probably doesn't have a Poison move, but without my Shed Shell, I don't need my shell, Shed Shell anymore. It's useless at this point. I'm gonna paralyze his Zoroark. Bad play. I'll tell you guys why. Because if I would have just knocked this thing out with a Moonblast, this game would have pretty much been mine at this point. Uh, because I have a Dragon Dance, Inferno Overdrive, Flygon in the back. I brought a Z-Move for once in my life, and I had it ready for his Skarmory, which ends up being especially defensive as you guys will see. But Fire Blast into Inferno Overdrive has a chance to kill after rocks. But... Because I didn't go for Moonblast, his Zoroark stays alive. And I make a very, very... Showdown's been messed up for me. As you guys can see uh, during my lives, I cannot see the percentages of Mons when I scroll over them on certain Pokemon. Like, I'll go over Skarmory, I'll go over Gothitelle, can't see it. Go over this, I can see it. You see? I can see, I can see that this is fainted, 
but I can't see that this is fainted. It doesn't show me all the mons, so I can't always check their percentages. I have to essentially write them down, and I don't always do that. So I'm going to have to figure out what the heck is wrong with my interface, but you guys will see what happens later. He's actually going to go out into his floor just because this thing essentially walls me. Uh, I'm going to go for a Moonblast on this turn. That was to go on the Zoroark. Uh, I'm going to go for another Moonblast, and I get a special attack drop here. And essentially, this is what I was trying to do. I was trying to special attack drop his floor just until it got low enough to where it couldn't Oko my Absol. And right now it is. But I can't just straight switch in my Absol on a potential Moonblast. He's going to go for Protect, though, making sure that I don't crit him. Uh, and I could have gone into Absol there and gone for an Iron Tail, and that would have been a really good play. Uh, I'm going to go for another Moonblast, going to get another special attack drop at as he wishes again. And I don't expect him to protect this turn, so I'm going to go for Moonblast. And he goes for I don't know what, because he gets fully paralyzed. So now he's back up to full. And once again, I'm going to click Soft Boil. I'm just going to keep staying in with Clefable, because I'm not risking him going for Moonblast. He has no reason to go for Wish on that turn, because his, his floor just is pretty much at full. And here, if I would have gotten a crit on this uh, Gudra, it would have gone down, but I don't, so it's going to get healed up quite a bit. But I get another special attack drop. So here, I think I have to make a play. He's going to go out into his floor just right here. He's going to be at 84%. And I'm going to go for another Moonblast. And here's where I double out into... No, not yet. <laughs> I'm going to go for another Moonblast. Not going to get the drop. He's going to get fully paralyzed, though. So right here, uh, I'm going to go for another Moonblast. Still trying to get a drop. Don't get it. He goes for a Wish. And now I'm going to stay in again. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to put on pressure on this thing. I'm not wasting all my Moonblasts either. I'm trying to conserve PP by going for Thunder Wave right there because I know he's going to go for Protect. I'm going to go for another Moonblast. He's going to get a special attack drop. So right here, he goes for a Wish, and I'm going to once again stay in. This is a very stally portion of the match. I'm going to go for another Moonblast. He's going to get his health back, and I'm going to now go for another Moonblast, trying to get another special attack drop, which I do, and he's going to go for another Wish, uh, and he's going to switch out back into his Gudra. But this time, I don't get a special attack drop, nor do I get a crit. So his Gujra is going to be pretty healthy, and he can fire off a Sludge Wave if he wants. So I have to stay in, take the Sludge Wave, go for another Moonblast. Uh, actually, I go for a Thunder Wave to slow this thing down. And then I'm going to go for a Moonblast, trying to get a special attack drop, which I do. And he is going to get fully paralyzed as well. Very unfortunate for Jar. Now I'm going to pull the offensive switch out into my Absol, knowing that he has to go back into his floor just to try to get the Aromatherapy off. I know that this thing is Bibiri Berry, guys. I'm very well aware of this. I don't see an item. I didn't see leftovers. When I brought in my Absol, I'm like, okay, his, his floor just is Bibiri Berry. But it's okay. Because even if he kills me, I'm going to do enough damage to him where Flygon can take him out with an Earthquake or Thunderous can take him out with a Thunderbolt. It doesn't matter. I'm going to do enough damage, and he has a chance to get paralyzed on this turn. So I'm going to go for Iron Tail. But of course I miss. Now, I'm not angry about this. Uh, I run the risk of not being able to hit when I run on Iron Tail. Anything below 80% and I'm never mad. Uh, Hurricane misses, Focus Blast misses, it happens all the time. So I'm not too mad about that one. But he's able to get off an Aromatherapy. So, that is a misplay on Jar's part. Because if I land that Iron Tail on his Florges, it's gone. It's dead. He can't switch anything into an Iron Tail. Everything's going to die. If he goes into Skarmory, I can Thunderbolt it. He's specially defensive, but it's still going to do a ton. His Gudra cannot take a knockoff. Even though I don't have it, he doesn't know that yet. Uh, he's just trying to heal off his Gudra. But I can still do a lot of damage to that thing. I have Ice Beam. I have Iron Tail is going to hit it really hard. I'm going to weaken his entire team and put everything in range of Flygon. But I miss the Iron Tail, and he goes for Aromatherapy, of all things. And now I'm going to go for another Iron Tail. I'm going to see the Bibiri Berry. Uh, it's going to do 33%, so the next one would have definitely killed. And he's going to get a defense drop right here. So I know that this is my only chance to bring in Flygon and threaten him out. But, again, I make a misprediction. Uh, and I know that he cannot stay in with his Florges. Yet still, I clicked Earthquake because I wanted to get rid of it. And I couldn't risk him going for Moonblast because I'm a minus Spadef nature. Because I'm running a physical and a special attack on this set. So I'm going to go for Earthquake. It is the real Skarmory this time. And I'm going to go for Fire Blast as he gets up a spike. Actually, I'm going to go for Dragon Dance to threaten him to see what he wants to do. See if he has Whirlwind. So now I'm faster than everything on his team. Let's see how much Fire Blast does. Uh, I connect and we get off 41%. So Infernal Overdrive is not necessarily a kill from here. But either way, he goes for Whirlwind. He gets me out of here. And he Whirlwinds me out into Clefable. And I have to go right back out into Flygon. I have to pressure this thing immediately. And I'm still faster than his Gudra and his Floor just right now. So I can still kill them both. So I'm going to go for another Fire Blast. Unfortunately, I miss. This is going to allow him to get off a Brave Bird on me. 
which is going to do a lot of damage. Had I run Roost on this set, I would have been fine here. I'm going to go for another Fire Blast. I'm actually going to get a crit on this turn, which is kind of important because now Inferno Overdrive does kill. As he's going to go for another Brave Bird, and I have to go for a uh, an Inferno Overdrive here to make sure that I don't miss the Fire Blast, essentially. Uh, he probably clicked Roost on that turn. I don't know what he did, but I'm going to knock out the Skarmory. So now that's fine. All good. And he's going to go into Florges, and uh, this isn't Florges, guys. This is where not being able to check the percentages on things matters because I knew how much his Zoroark was at. I knew it was at 42%. I saw 41% prior, but at this point, I was not able to see either one. I was scrolling over both, and I was like, hold on, is this actually Florges? Uh, and I couldn't tell, but I knew that Florges was at about this amount of health, so I stayed in with my Flygon as he goes for Sucker Punch and knocks out my last remaining win condition. And he's going to go down to 20%. I'm going to go out into Clefable. He's going to click Knock Off. Uh, I already lost my item, so that does absolutely nothing. I'm going to go for Soft Boiled. And I'm probably, I'm, I think I'm going to go for another Soft Boiled on the following turn because he's going to knock himself out with the Life Orb. So I'm going to be up to full. Now, there's only one more way I can win this game. And that is, by the way, that's not Zoroark Alive, that's Florges. Here it is, the real one. And... Um, he's now going to go for a wish uh, as I go for a Thunder Wave. So he's just outside of range of my Moonblast at the moment. Uh, so I can't kill this at all. He's going to go for Protect. I'm going to go for a Moonblast in case he gets the, uh, the full para. I would keep him low. And now I'm going to Moonblast again. Try to lower his attack again. See what we can do. He's going to go for Wish. And I'm just going to keep staying in with uh, Clefable. He's going to get the full para on that turn. Uh, we are going to get off the Moonblast, and he's going to go up to 82%. And now I'm going to Moonblast again. Again, it's just like repeated things going on here. I'm not actually going to forward. Okay, so this is the turn. He gets fully parried. I'm going to go out into my Thunderous, hoping that he'd protect, and he does. So he goes for protect. It fails, and I'm hoping that he doesn't break through para this turn. I'm going to go for Thunderbolt. He protects. He does break through para, but I have just enough health to live with Thunderous for one more turn. So I have to go for T-Bolt here. He knows that, he goes out into his Gudra, but now his Gudra is really weak. And so is his Florges when it comes back in on rocks. I'm gonna die to burn, and basically what happens here is if he switches out of his Gudra, and he goes into Florges, and if I get a crit, or if he gets parried on either one of the turns that he goes for Wish or Protect, I win the game, 100%. He switches out into Florges, and I go for a Moonblast, and as you guys will see, it does 19%. So all I need to happen is for him to get parried on either a wish or a protect because he does not have leftovers. We popped the Babiri Berry earlier. So I'm going to go for another Moonblast. He gets off the wish. But it's okay. I can still win. All I need is a para on this turn. Just one. <laughs> just this turn and the game ends because his wish doesn't go off to Gudra and his floor just dies. My Clef can take uh, a sludge wave from Gudra, even a crit, it's at 28%, it comes in on rocks, it dies to Moonblast. All I need is the para on this turn, and I don't get it, unfortunately. So, now I'm going to switch this over to fast, because what's going to happen now, guys, is that I'm going to run out of PP on my Moonblast. So, had I made this thing Calm Mind, uh, this game would have been in my favor 100%, because the only thing he had to break Calm Mind Clef was his Gothitelle, and I was Shed Shell. And I could switch into my Absol and kill his Gothitelle with a um, with a Pursuit. Well, not kill, but it would have left it in range of dying. If it switched in on rocks, it was dead to two Pursuits, essentially. Uh, I ran out of uh, Moonblast at this point. As you can see, he's just going for Sludge Wave. I'm just spamming Thunder Wave, and this is going to be GG. So uh, the winner of this game moved on in pools, and the loser... Stayed behind, unfortunately, uh, and that is us. So, uh, a couple of mishaps in the game. The missed Iron Tail, uh, the early game predictions from him and his Gudra, uh, the fact that he caught me twice with his Zoroark, not once, twice, um, mainly because I can't see the percentages on Showdown and I can't check them. Otherwise, I would have known uh, because I knew that his Zoroark was at 41%, uh, and I should have probably noticed when it came in because if I would have kept my Flygon and I would have switched out into Clefable, uh, my Flygon could still come in later and Earthquake the, uh, the, the floor just and do a lot of damage to it. Uh, and he would, ha he would be forced to go for a Moonblast on that turn uh, because he can't go for Wish Protect repeatedly because I have Dragon Dance and I would just be able to destroy his entire team with that. Uh, so that's essentially 
what happened. Uh, he did have Pursuit on his Zoroark, so it was a 50-50. He banked on the fact uh, that I wouldn't notice that his Florges and his Zoroark were at different percentages. He got that right, too. So, all the props to Jar. He played amazing. I have nothing against this, this win. This was actually one of the best games that I've had uh, ever. <laughs> this is a really, really close and good game. A uh, couple of mistakes on each end. Nothing too serious. Nothing that was, like, game-ending. Uh, but a lot of, I think there was, there were a lot of little things that I could have done differently, but everything is, is hindsight. Uh, everything is, I, I see, I look back at the game and I, I could have done this, I could have done that, and, uh, if the fire, if the first fire blast would have hit, maybe Inferno Overdrive would have knocked him out, uh, I could have just run the calc to see what my odds were, and then my Flygon would have been healthier, his Sucker Punch from his Zoroark wouldn't have taken me out, I would have been more careful around it because I was, I wouldn't be at 22%, all of these factors, basically. Uh, came into play, but uh, ultimately, this was just a really good game. There was nothing I could say uh, about it. Jar's, Jar's an amazing player. Uh, I think we highly regard each other as very good players, and I think we're both very good eligible members for the NPL. Uh, just to show you, I went 2-1 last year. Uh, not last year, but last season in the NPL when I replaced Rob. I mentioned it all the time, but I could have gone 3-0. I just misstepped around a potential Scarf Blaziken when, at that point, I was so far back that I should have just been playing as if it wasn't Scarfed. Uh, this was against Togue. You guys never got to see that game uh, because I thought I had uploaded it. I recorded it. I remembered that I had recorded it, but I never uploaded the game, uh, which was really uh, bad on my part. Uh, I don't. I can't remember if Rob actually did it. Uh, if I, I'm gonna check his channel after this, but um, essentially we've got a really good record in most of the leagues, in, in like in really like important situations. Uh, but just things like this, where you have to win two out of three games essentially to make it, uh, it's tough sometimes because you don't always have the matchup. You don't always have. We we draft our teams without knowing anything. We we didn't know what we were going into. Uh, we didn't know who we were gonna be up against. Uh, there were so many different teams. You could have literally any matchup. I don't think I had a difficult matchup at any point. I could have easily won my game too. If you guys haven't checked that out, go check it out. It's the, uh, the battle uh, the battle with the similar thumbnail right before this one. But um, yeah, look, we're out of contention, unfortunately, which means that we probably won't be making it into NPL minors. Maybe. We'll see about that, but... Anyway, that's going to wrap it up, guys. If you uh, if you did enjoy, <laughs> make sure to leave a like down below. Uh, make sure to go to check out my opponent in the description. Please go check out Jar, and uh, I will catch you guys later. Ciao.